Hi, so if you've been following the playlist and you've been following this series where we're looking at the Elegoo Mars 2 UV MSLA printer, then you'll have watched videos 1325, 1335 and 1337 where we got it out of the box, we set it up, we had a look at the software and now, hey presto, it's time to do a print. So my sliced software is on this USB stick here, we're going to put it in the printer and we're going to do our first print. Now some folks, actually one guy said, uh, will you just get on with it and do a print? Now I was thinking, working with something like this is actually a bit more like a love affair, is you're going to take time over it, you're going to be using it a lot, you want to get to the ins and outs of it, you want to explore that software to see what you can do, and you want to some, uh, run some prints. Now obviously we're not just going to print with this, we want to do other things with it as well so there's no good buying it a drink and trying to get it into bed straight away you have to take your time so take your time over it enjoy the experience of doing it because you are going to be working with it a bit now to do this I have been banging on about this tug of war between the base plate and the FEP sheet so this is the base plate and in our reservoir we've got this FEP sheet the light shines through the sheet, sets the resin, which is basically a glue, and it glues this plate to this sheet. Then the machine will tug it off the plate, raise it, lower it back down for the next slice. But continually, there's this tug of war going on. Now, what we want to do is ensure that that tug of war is won by this plate. Now, we talked about that when we talked about running the software, and there's a couple of little tricks that have been shown that should help that happen, should help that tug of war win. Now, one of them is to make this a little less sticky, and the other is to make that a little more sticky. So to make this a little less sticky, what we can do is give it a coating of this stuff, which is PTFE. You do not want to spray the PTFE directly into the reservoir. Get yourself a cloth, give it a spray of the PTFE, and then give it a wipe over. You're not aiming to get it wet, you're aiming to put a layer of PTFE on that FEP sheet to make it that little bit more, or rather a little bit less sticky. So we get a little layer on there that will ease it coming apart. Now I've been told you only have to do this once. That's it, we're ready to go. Okay, we're going to use this stuff, which is the ABS-like resin, and there's the standard polymer resin here. This stuff is harder and more brittle. This has a bit of flexibility. It's ABS-like, it's not ABS. So for um, mechanical parts, machine parts, you're going to be using something like this. For models, you're going to be using something like the standard resin, and there are an awful lot of resins out there. And all worth giving a go if you really want to get into this. I'm interested in making mechanical parts, so that's what I'm going to be using. I'm also interested in doing experimentation to try and make this stuff um, conductive, and we'll be playing around with that. Now, you'll notice I've got gloves on, as this stuff is not the nicest of stuff. It does wash off with isopropanol alcohol or IPA, and then some soap and water, and it will wash off. But you're better off not getting it on your skin at all and it is somewhat stinky so if you want to wear a mask wear a mask if you want to put it into an environment where you've got a, a good airflow then do that in the reservoir you'll see a fill line it says max so you pop that into your there and you don't really need to go up to the max fill line just somewhere around about there Yep. Right, this foot. This foot on the Pro 2 is actually a bit of uh, ground aluminium and there are lots of little hills and valleys in there. If I just stick that straight in there, as the machine lowers it down, the air in these little hills and valleys is going to get trapped. And because it's trapped, it's not in the best contact with the foot plate and it's going to have less chance of sticking to that because you've got air gaps in between it. So the thing to do is just wipe a bit of this stuff over it to make sure that you've got good coating of all those little hills and valleys without trapping some air. So 
So we give that a nice coating and then the air won't get trapped because there's already the resin in there. And you don't have to worry about these little bits here because this thing is going to dip into that resin anyway. You'll notice I've got a bin right ready there to take all of this stuff. Okay, and we can pop that on. Now we can take our sliced software, turn the machine on and begin the print. Okay, so you turn the machine on and you'll get the splash screen. I've stuck the USB in the USB port and we press print. There are the files. Now you'll notice there's a pretty little picture there of the file that we actually want to print. I have heard people are having some problems with this. Got to remember that this printer needs its native file format. It's got to be sliced for those pretty pictures to appear on the mono screen. And for that, it needs to be in a CTB format for the Alagu Mars 2P. If you try to print STL, it's not going to do it, because STL, remember, are not printer files. STL files are the files that come out of your CAD drawing program. You've got to convert them to the slices for the specific printer. So in the Chitterbox software, you have to set the printer to the printer that you're trying to send the files to. Uh, if you just look on the settings pro, uh, section of the program, click on the printer, add printer, and you can see the different mix of printer that you can set Chitterbox to print from. So you set it for the particular printer. We've got a Mars 2P and a Mars 2P at CTB files. And then we can just select that C2B and we get the pretty picture and it's now ready to print. And then we can press print. Now I know this is going to take about three and a half, four hours because that's what the Chitterbox software told me. So all you got to do now is leave that alone. I had to do a little shot of this because I think that's really cute. Right there, it's showing the um, little image of what it's currently exposing. So as it progresses, that image will change to show you what's being exposed at any particular time. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's finished printing, so we can take it out of the printer. That's awesome, actually. Amazing. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So that is the first 3D print I've ever done. And to be honest, it's really quite good. Now you hear nothing but horror stories about this, how it fails to print. And one of the reasons we've gone through it in such a stepwise routine is because if you do those things, then you'll get a print straight from the bat, it would seem. So first print, first try, first effort, and it printed just fine, as long as you take the necessary steps. Shortcut any of those and you're probably gonna get a bit of a mess, but. <laughs> That's really very cool. I still need to give it a bit of a harden because I've washed it in IPA. I've taken off the um, support material. There's a bit too much support in some areas, so I clearly need to address that. Stick it in the sun so that it actually hardens up because it's still a little flexible and tacky and you can feel that actually. It does help you remove the support, but you can feel it. Now in terms of the smell, yeah, there's a little bit of a smell. But to be honest, it's not that bad. But then we are in a large open area with good ventilation. And I didn't find the smell an issue. Now you can get a wash station for this, which I believe they call their mercury wash station and UV station. But I just put it in a cup of IPA and I'll stick it on the windowsill in some sun and that'll do it just fine as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have success in your own prints. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.